Hello and welcome everybody. King Demps here. Today we are going to be answering the question, how do you beat Na'Vi? Obviously the game we are going to be using to answer this question is going to be the phase Na'Vi game from ESL Pro League Season 15. And I think there are a few insights that we can take from phase both on the T side, specifically of Inferno, and then of the CT side on Dust2 in order to answer the question, just how do you have to play to make Na'Vi uncomfortable and to beat them? First up, let's take a look at the T side of that Inferno. So we're picking up this T side from the point where FaZe Clan are 3-1 up. This is obviously pistols and everything out the way, and we are into the first buy round. Now, what FaZe Clan are going to do here is they are going to hit Nartis Vincere with an incredibly pacey round. Now, just watch here. Literally straight up middle, ignoring every other part of the map, and they're just going to go super quickly. As we can see here, FaZe get a very quick entry. So they put Na'Vi under a lot of pressure. And before the rotation can come in, they also move in and they're going to take down Electronic. There we have it. Now, I'm just going to show you what that round looks like from the minimap. Now, here we go. This is from the minimap's point of view, just so that you can see exactly what went down. As you can see, Simple and Bit have played a double setup on Porch. And those flashes essentially isolate Bit, make it very uncomfortable for Bit or Simple to take a duel. And the entries just come thick and fast. Now, the reason that this round is important to look at is that it is very important in conditioning Na'Vi. What it does is it conditions Na'Vi in two very important ways. Firstly, it makes Na'Vi reluctant and hesitant to take brackets control and fight for it because FaZe at any point might just rush three people up there and create a humongous bum fight essentially at the top of mid in and around that brackets area. Na'Vi are going to think twice about setting up there early in the round. The other way in which this is a very important conditioning move is it also conditions Na'Vi to use grenades early. Carrigan actually spoke about this in an interview he did with me at ESL Pro League, and he said this was part of their game plan. It was to drain that Na'Vi utility early. He was talking about it in that instance, I think, on the T side, trying to make sure they didn't have nades for executes, which it becomes important when we look later on at the Dust2 portion of this game. But even here, it seems like FaZe Clan was saying to themselves, let's make sure that Na'Vi are uncomfortable early in the round, that they have to use a lot of utility, so that later on in the round, when we're executing onto the sites, they don't have as much utility to support the fights that they are going to take. The final aspect of this little round that I want to emphasize is the fact that FaZe stayed grouped, they were decisive, and they were fast when they chose to hit a certain area of the map. And that is going to, again, become important later on in the game as we look at more rounds. We're now in round seven, so that is two rounds after the first gun round. FaZe Clan are continuing to run away with the lead. Na'Vi have taken a save, and they are back on the guns. Now, this is actually going to be focusing on the B bomb side, but this was another, I think, key aspect of FaZe's plan on this T side of Inferno, and that was basically to make it very difficult for Boomich to do his usual aggressive maneuvers on Banana. Now, we're going to see Carrigan use a fairly standard utility set for Banana Control. He's going to pop a smoke down towards the top of banana and he's going to throw a couple of flashes in there so that twists let me show you where that smoke lands so the twists can get through the smoke at the bottom of banana and take a little bit of banana control now they don't just stick around once twists gets into banana they're actually going to go one step further and make sure they take control of that sandbags position that boomich likes to play now as we can see carrigan and twist just going to creep up a little bit here they're going to get their utility set ready. And here we go. They are pushing Boomich out of that position. Now, a good counter flash actually means that Boomich is able to get out of there alive. But as you can see, if we take a little look at the utility on the B defenders, Perfecto is left with a single HE and Boomich has absolutely nothing. So once again, we can see that the phase game plan is about draining utility early. And later on in the round, they're actually going to come back to this B bomb site and hit it. So, as I've said, draining utility, but 
what was the other important aspect? Boomich could not play aggressively in Banana. And even though FaZe Clan traded somebody's life for it, they're actually going to go on to win the round. So what we've seen in the two rounds that we've looked at is that FaZe are making Na'Vi very nervous to play aggressively in the two key spots on the map where the CTs can hold a little bit more aggressively on CT. Or on Inferno, sorry. And that is Brackets and Banana. And once again, draining utility so that later on in the round, the bomb site they go to does not have a lot of utility in order to support the jewels and the fights that they are going to take. As you can see, we are now later on in the round and FaZe have come back to this B bomb site, and here we are going to hit it. As you can see here, Boomich is going to get flushed out. No smokes to get rid of that molly, so he is dead. And now Perfecto is left taking dry jewels and it's going to be very difficult. As you can see, he's going to get traded out here. It's very difficult for him to get anything done in the bomb site here. FaZe get the bomb down and Na'Vi are actually going to fall back and save on this one because again, they have very little utility for the reason take another important aspect of phase's strategy was having reads on where simple was and i think this is a key round as you can see there simple at three he's to the face i believe that was a pretty clean read from carrigan on where simple was going to be playing with the orb that round and if you combine those three rounds that I've shown you together, you basically get the crux of FaZe's strategy on the T side on this map. They were making sure that when they did hit anywhere, they were grouped, they were pacey, they were decisive. They did not allow Na'Vi to isolate jewels very easily. They made sure to drain out Na'Vi's utility and condition Na'Vi in such a way that they were using a lot of utility early in the rounds. Again, with the idea of making sure the Na'Vi struggled to get even or advantageous gunfights because they don't have utility to support it and three they made sure that navi had a tough time playing aggressively anywhere on ct brackets control was hard for them to take or something that they were not very willing to take early in the round and playing aggressive on b which is something boomich loves to do was very very difficult for navi all of these things combined together obviously with some very clean trading and spacing on their hits meant the phase clan ran away with this t side and this t side was the reason that they won this map and they won it pretty convincingly now this is going on to the ct side on dust 2 and this first aspect that i want you to focus on again is how much phase clan made navi drain utility early on in the rounds what we're gonna see is we're gonna see navi go for their fairly standard long take but what phase do is they don't back down they fight for this and they make navi drain more utility than i think they would have liked as you can see lots of flashes coming in navi have to counter flash a lot a lot of nades coming in and then Another important aspect of this is FaZe Clan, as you can see, both from this angle, but also if we take a look at the minimap, they don't back down and fall all the way off long and give up the long control. I think this is something that is really important to do against Na'Vi's T side on this map. Na'Vi like to take the long control and then slowly creep up long, basically with no other map control or maybe with one other person making sure the backstab doesn't coming in. And honestly, it's a round that doesn't work that much for other teams, but it works a lot for Na'Vi. That slow creep up long with minimal utility, just clearing out angles and taking fights. FaZe don't allow them to do that, don't allow them to get settled, and instead fight for the long control. We'll just play out the round and you can see how it goes down. More utility used. Even though Carrigan dies early, it doesn't matter. They still keep fighting. Rain is still fighting on this angle. Brokey is still fighting at car. As you can see, Rain is going to swing out and continue to fight on this angle. He actually kills Electronic down here on Platt. And Na'Vi are basically stopped in their tracks. They have to give up the long control. I don't think they have the utility set to handle a retaking of long control. As you can see, FaZe still have flashbangs in their pockets on Rops and Twists. If somebody rotates, gets some flashbangs, Na'Vi are going to struggle to hang on to this long control. And they're basically just going to be sitting ducks, particularly with Brokey with an AWP holding that long angle. This is tough. And so Na'Vi, as you can see, are going to fall back. The round, however, is not over. As you can see, Na'Vi have fallen back into a short hit and FaZe read this perfectly. And again, they get aggressive and they fight Na'Vi. They don't allow Na'Vi to get settled in what they want to do. They get up in Na'Vi's face and they stop it before it can happen. Again, this was a very, very key aspect of the FaZe game plan. They didn't let Na'Vi get set up in their executes, swing out on the angles and take the jewels they want to take. They got up in Na'Vi's face and they disrupted Na'Vi's plans on on the T side and this was very vital throughout the whole of this CT half.
This is on the very next gun round, and once again, you're going to see how FaZe emphasized aggressive play. Rops is going to take an incredibly aggressive approach in lower, supported, as you can see, by Rain here on short. And again, they are disrupting Na'Vi. They're not allowing Na'Vi to get map control for free. They're forcing, as you can see here, Na'Vi to drain utility in order to take that map control. And they're making it very, very difficult for Na'Vi to get set up in the way they want. Now, they trade one for one here, but as you can see, looking at Na'Vi's utility set, they're down to two flashbangs. It's going to be very difficult to clear angles, and you already know that there's another AWP in the form of Brokey. And I think, again, that was something FaZe Clan did on Dust2 very intentionally, was bringing out that double AWPs on a map with lots of long angles and trying to drain Na'Vi's utility early. They're not going to have flashbangs late round to get the AWPs off the angles, or they're not going to be able to clear all of them. It's going to be very tough for Na'Vi to not at least lose one play player to the AWP when they're trying to attack the site. Now, as we can see, we're getting later into the round and Na'Vi are going for a mid to B take. And once again, FaZe don't just sit back and fall into the retake. Brain and Brokey fairly aggressively fight for this mid control. And Carrigan came in on the backstab, as you can see there from mid doors, again, to fight for that mid control. Very rarely on this CT side did FaZe say, it's okay, just fall back, we'll play in the retake. Pretty much at all points, they were trying to get in Na'Vi's face, disrupt their plan look for backstabs and flanks look to fight through smokes as rain did there trying to get over that smoke and fight they never said let's just chill out and retake for example in that round they could have said let's let twists go one for one on b site let's try and get a retake going I know it's B-Site and Dust2, not the best to retake. But what I am saying here is that FaZe were constantly trying to disrupt Na'Vi's plans, never allowing Na'Vi to get settled. Once again, we are back on Rops in a double AWP setup. And once again, as you can see, Rops is going to play very aggressively in middle. He throws the same smoke that they threw. And he again goes for this lower control, this aggressive line with the AWP. Now, as you can see here, if we just wait a little bit, he's obviously going to fall back off it. But again, it shows FaZe's willingness and, in fact, their preference to play very aggressively on the CT side, take strong and aggressive angles, and force Na'Vi to drain utility. Here we are late in the round, and we can see the problems. It's just so difficult to flash everyone off of all of these angles, and Rops picks up a free kill with that AWP, and the hit is stopped in its tracks. Again, just emphasizing draining that utility, very important. Having the orbs on angles and it's difficult to flash them all off, very important. Na'Vi were basically never able to get comfortable on this T side. Now, here we are coming to the final round of the game. Now, I know I was focusing on the CT side here, but I think this last round, which was a set round by FaZe Clan, basically epitomizes everything I've been saying about being fast-paced, about being combative, about not allowing Na'Vi to get comfortable. As we can see, this set round here completely catches Na'Vi with their pants down. FaZe Clan get the B site for free, and it is already going to be a very difficult retake for Na'Vi. Now... Another thing I want to emphasize again, and if we just take a look at the minimap, look at the aggressive positioning of the phase players. They are not playing passive. They are not sitting back and sitting in the site and waiting for the retake to come. They're playing aggressively. They're taking aggressive positions, and it's going to lead to success in the round. Again, taking aggressive fights, not waiting for people to walk into them. Again, you're going to see another aggressive fight taken. And this is the way that FaZe Clan were able to win this series. If you want to boil it down to a few very key points, I think one, not being scared, being willing to play aggressive, being willing to disrupt Na'Vi, being willing to not allow them to play their game. Two, draining utility on both sides early from Na'Vi. FaZe identified this particularly Carrigan mentioned it in the interview, that draining that utility and not allowing them to have those flashbangs and such for the late rounds was very, very important. And three, I think FaZe Clan, from their point of view, in general, they were very willing to, like I say, be aggressive and take fights, but they did it together. Their spacing was good. They were often grouped. They didn't allow Na'Vi to isolate jewels very easily. And all of these things combined together... Obviously, a few specifics on Inferno and Dust 2, but these principles distilled, combined together, were what allowed FaZe to take this game pretty comfortably in the end.
that's it from me today guys i hope you enjoyed the video this one was obviously a little bit more informative and a little bit less humorous than maybe some of my other ones but let me know if you liked it let me know if you didn't and let me know if you want to see more like comment all of that good stuff because it always helps me out and remember that if you did not like it you're probably a navi fan and all you've got to say is fair play to phase